Hi there, I am Vivian Harold, a mixed media artist. I am from Tomball, Texas. It's pretty close to Houston and I've lived all around Houston um, as well as many other places, but Houston is what I call home. I am very excited to share that I will be calling Colorado home soon as my family is making a plan to buy some land and start a family farm. I'm excited about where that might lead my art um, and I'm really happy about the opportunity to have more photography in my life and, and more things to take pictures of. I am the owner of Vivid Luster Factory, Vivid Luster Fine Art, and Vivid Luster Photography. Vivid Luster Factory is my little Santa's workshop where I make custom gifts, custom decorations. I do a lot of holiday work. It's my favorite time of the year. I get really inspired with all the images and color themes that come out every year for holiday decor for both Halloween and for Christmas. So if you look around and as we progress through this presentation, you will see that there is quite a bit of, of holiday work in my production side of things. And that's what Vivid Luster Factory is. It's, it's my moneymaker. Vivid Luster Fine Art, of course, is my fine art work. I am happy that I have separated those two things because I do think that they will have uh, very separate traje trajectories <laughs> in the future. Um, you can visit Vivid Luster Factory to see any upcoming events that I have and workshops or schedule studio time or order a custom gift of lots of diff lots of varying mediums. And then Vivid Luster Photography isn't quite born yet, but it will be. And I have found that as I round out my degree in photography, I'm getting a lot more opportunities to shoot professionally. Um, I've got a a booking for January for a website that needs some images. That's really exciting for me. And I've got some other family members and friends that have requested paid photo shoots for graduation, birthdays, and different things like that. So I'm really excited about what's going to exist in this next six or eight months before my MFA program begins. I guess I should have, there we go. That's much better, sorry about that. So I was a writer when I was younger and I created a lot of visual, or I guess I can't call it visual art, but I created a lot of art with my writings because I was very descriptive and I was almost always fully describing what somebody would see so that even though there were a lot of different readers of my work, they all seemed to come out with pretty close to what I was trying to get them to imagine. And while I was in the military, the US Navy, I filled up tons and tons of sketchbooks and pages with words and stories and poems and song lyrics. And I just, ran out of words one day and I didn't want to write anymore and I didn't want to form sentences and I just wanted to let the pen kind of my hand lead the pen wherever it might land. So I started doodling. You see here one of the very first doodles I ever made. It, uh, I, I share this one with you because one detail in this photo, the squiggly cloud line on the left, became the first painting I ever put up in my own home. And it stayed with me for about a decade and then it sold. It was uh, a, a gray background with a big yellow moon. It was across four canvases and these squiggly clouds existed around the moon and it was black and white and yellow and gray. And it was something that was about my aesthetic at the time. And once I painted that, I really never, ever went back to writing. Of course, achieving a BFA, I've been writing some, that's for sure. I still feel a bit of a draw to writing, and I may go back to that at some point in my life. Um, I am trying to come up with a great idea for a blog on my fine art page. 
With my family moving to Colorado, I also have the opportunity to start a farm. I also have an opportunity to maybe blog about how that goes for for city folk that haven't been around a whole lot of animals. So this is some of my personal production work. Um, the moon on the right hand side is the oldest piece that I still have. And it came from a time when I was creating a whole lot of work and it all had this visual texture background and then some sort of icon image in the front of it. And you can see that that does repeat throughout a lot of my work here. Uh, you see the, the dead moors. Um, an old flower painting that I, that it honestly isn't even complete. I have a wall in my studio right back there that holds a lot of pieces that I feel aren't complete so that they can be up and I can be seeing them and maybe coming up with more ideas for how to complete them. I do find the most pleasing work to be when I am making something for someone. These two pieces are really special because I'm making them in memory of someone. The ceramic piece, Grandma's Buttons, is a replica of the button tin that I inherited from my grandma. I find that, tra that American tradition to be just a little a comic relief to think that 50 or 60 years ago, when my grandmother was a young adult, she was saving every single button. And now I live in a time where I can be a bit wasteful in comparison. I find it funny that almost every woman my age, if she's not the youngest sister, she might have a button tin from her grandma and um, they're filled with beautiful pieces of our history and how things used to be made because looking at buttons made today and buttons in these button tins, they're so very, very different. It also makes me, when I fumble through her button tin, I, I think about what shirts or what blouses these, these buttons may have come off of, what pants, what uniforms coming from a military family. There was a lot of that in the button tin and everybody's button tin is so different. It's, it's just a really neat thing to consider how wide and varied um, that American tradition is. The piece on the right is my husband's mother's badge. I was not blessed to meet her, but I wanted him to know that I made this for him the very first Christmas that we were together. And I wanted him to know that I would always try to honor her memory for him and make sure that he felt like this was a house she could be a matriarch, that this is a house she could be a matriarch of. And um, those are some really big shoes to fill because she's got two amazing sons that I adore. And this piece is special to both of them. I am very fortunate to have gone to school at Sam Houston State University. My dad lives in Huntsville and I hadn't seen a lot of him as I was a young adult, um, traveling, being in the military, living all over the world, just following my wild oats. <laughs> Um, I didn't get to see a lot of him and I know that he missed me because when I was a young kid, I was his right hand man. He was a jack of all trades and had a million different professions. Even one of those professions was photojournalism in the 80s. I remember holding whiteboards, reflector boards for him. I have been his sous chef. I have helped him work on boats and cars and um, we are great fishing buddies and having these, this time that I've been at Sam Houston, um, it's allowed me to have more time with him and that's just a, a blessing I, that I can't put a value on. He was always a willing participant in my art and it seemed like every time I was struggling, I, you know, like I had something but I just didn't have it all the way there. He was a really great sounding board. He, not that he gave me a lot of ideas, but he would let me just sit there and spin and spin until something turned to thread. 
and uh, I, I, I'm going to miss him so much when I move away. Uh, I might be able to sneak into Colorado. <laughs> he might, he might want to live there too. <laughs> uh, my other family members are always collaborative and willing participants in my work as well. My son and all of his characteristics and boisterous personality, uh, he will jump in front of the camera every chance he gets. He will come along and help me as an extra pair of hands. And I cherish, cherish my kids and the way that they help me create my art. My daughter Kylie always wants to always reminds me to bring my camera and she has an eye for environments and backgrounds that I don't always see. And she encourages me to see the world with a more open mind and she's not ever smiling on camera. In life she smiles a lot actually, but she is always willing to jump in front of the camera and be a model for me. And it's a lot of fun exploring with her. And the third picture here is Aria, my best friend's new baby girl. And I'm blessed to know that I'll get to take pictures of this gorgeous thing as she grows up. And when I am taking pictures of her or anyone in her family, it's really great that all the rest of the family jumps in and helps, helps with the po either the post-production or the studio production, holding things, moving lights, coming up with ideas. It's it's really fun to have so many great collaborators in my life. But a girl's got to work and I can't do all the fun stuff all the time. <laughs> this is me in my studio. Um, there is so much stuff in here because I work in so many mediums and I, I don't like to do anything the same way. Although I do like to do one thing over and over and over again, I like to change it. So the Dead Moors is a painting, but it will soon be an etched mirror. It may be a sculpture. Um, all the work that I'm doing with hearts and love, those things kind of very fluidly switch in and out of different mediums, whether it's paint or sculpture or styrofoam or clay, or ceramic clay or air dry clay or paper or, a million different things. Now I also do a lot of product, production work to get money. So I make, I turn photographs into paintings and drawings. I make a lot of holiday decor and a, quite a bit of custom art um, in any sort of medium, even making t-shirts for people that they have something specific that they want in mind or if I want something. And around this time of year, I make a whole lot of pajamas <laughs> so my family can match. <laughs> I think they might not like it as much as I do. <laughs> this is the Dead Moors. Uh, this is definitely a series of work, a body of work that continues for me. I painted this style about three years ago. I had seen some bust uh, in the holiday decor section that were 50 bucks a piece and there was no way I could afford that. So I took a picture and I turned the picture into a painting. <laughs> I made a few adjustments so that it would be more unique and personal and truly be my art, but I did use the bones, no pun intended, of, of the bust so that I could create art myself and not have to pay a hundred dollars. <laughs> And these fit on the wall, which is a lot nicer than having to find a place to sit a bust. Another thing that I do for production and for income is glass etching. I visit different breweries locally and I offer workshop classes as well as just sitting in the brewery and making custom etch glasses for people as they order. It just really depends on what the customer wants. I can do it either way, no matter what type of event I'm there for. It's a lot of fun. It's, it always gets the wow factor and it's something that nobody else was doing. Um, I wanted to be working at the breweries because I was personally a little passionate about craft beer and um, tasting the different styles, getting to know what it was. It's an art just the same as cooking and painting. So I, I was enjoying learning quite a bit about it. 
And the mirror on the top here is a mirror that I made for an EMT's benefit after she found out that she had lymphoma. I'm sure that the benefit got canceled due to COVID and I never heard back from her, but I do hope that this piece resides somewhere where somebody's loving it. And if it's at her home, I hope that it reminds her to get better and get back to work as soon as she can. Below that, you'll see all of the different mirrors I've been collecting since making this one because I have a lot of ideas that I wanna push forward on in glass etching and mirror etching. Um, one of these mirrors will be a Hispanic or Latin senorita. I'm thinking kind of like a, cheetah, a Chiquita banana girl with the fruit hat. One of them will be a continuation of the dead moors. The large one in the middle with the big frame that looks like it sat on a dresser. I'm going to put the, the full family, the four person family of the dead moors on that one. And that's going to remain in my personal collection. That's a, that's a piece that's very, that will be very close to me. And so people find who, people who know me find all of these old antique mirrors and bring them to me. And I'm so thankful for that. I think these are going to inspire a lot of really great work. Now in juxtaposition to really great work, I'd like to talk a little bit about my experience at SAM. I went into SAM thinking with a mindset of, I want to learn as much as I can about all the different mediums of art because I don't know what I wanna focus in. And all I found out was that I don't wanna focus in anything <laughs> for very long. <laughs> These pieces aren't named because they're, they're rough drafts. And although they were turned in for grades, they taught me to kind of open my mind. They exemplified for me the problem that I was having with conceptualism. And it explained to me, it made it very clear that I was making art about happy love as if that's all that existed for me. And because I was doing that, it was very surface and it wasn't very deep because it wasn't very real. So after getting a insulting critique of this is Hallmark, I realized, oh, I need a little pain with my pleasure. So that's where my work really started to change. I started thinking about what social impact I think I could have on the world. It would be quite a aloof of me to think that I might have some kind of social impact on the world based on what our cultural cultural revolution is doing to us socially. Um, I just don't think that I have the tools or I'm the person to make that a better a better thing, even though that's what I would love to impact about the world and and, and the future. So when I started thinking about what could I really tell the world and share with the world that might make someone's life better, it became healing and taking accountability for transgressions and allowing yourself the right to heal through emotional pain. And you can see that that's touched on in some of my older pieces, but when I came to this realization that that's, that's what I can do with my art, it turned and became the curios and it's an explanation of, well, the curio of Lady Vey Lynn, the first one of the series, is an explanation of my accountability and that I have a desire to write anything I have done wrong so that I can feel like I've lived a good life. Um, you guys have all seen the curio of Lady Vey Lynn. It has grown since the senior exhibition. This is a piece I added to it and I wanted to bring this piece out here because I really love the way it, one, kind of produced itself and two, the way it holds everything about the subject matter that I wanted it to hold. I wanted to make an inventory or make a piece that's in reaction to the anxiety and guilt 
and fear and all of the negative emotions that come with temporary romantic connections. Um, I wanted to just gather some things from my studio and throw it at the canvas without any rules or parameters and let it be what it could be just by looking at what it was. So I created this texture and I painted it black and I put some red in it and it really feels to me like it's the crumpled sheets after a one night stand that hold maybe the negative emotions of one person versus the positive and powerful emotions of, an, of the other person um, or just in every single fold could be a different emotion. It's, it's going to be a special piece for me for a very long time. I don't know if it will ever go up for sale. Amulets will continue. Uh, these 16 pieces do represent me, but I'm going to continue to take pictures of rings that belong to women that I love, rings that remind me of women that I respect, um, as well as maybe characters that I dream up that travel the world and break hearts. <laughs> Um, and that's what it is. It's this, even though this one doesn't directly apply to me, it is a representation of a character that I do assume or a synonym for me. Valentine is a ceramic piece. Uh, didn't expect it to come out this well, didn't expect to love it this much but it is a piece that I was making because I couldn't make anything else come out right in the, in the ceramic studio. So I pushed everything aside. I pushed my project aside. I'm just going to make something. And I'm going to try to make the walls as straight as I can. I'm going to try to make the surface as flat as I can. I'm going to try to make this with as few blemishes as possible. Ooh, I got excited. As possible. <laughs> and it came out beautifully. It will remain a very important piece in my personal collection and in my home decor. Um, again, you can find and follow me and my careers at vividlusterfineart.com, vividlusterfactory, vividlusterphotography. In my master's programs, I want to work on some installation, or excuse me, some experience-based installations. I want something that's very large and that you have to, excuse me, walk in and around and, and get to view from very many different vantage points. I want to create something that has a piece that the audience can take home, much like acquiesce from the Curio Lady Valen. And I also want to make some an installation that has some actual interaction, like the audience helps to create or change or evolve the piece. Um, and all of that will balance itself between paper sculpting, photography, and ceramics or sculpture ceramics. I am also looking at a BFA program that offers some post studio practices and you know looking outside of the studio and outside of normal art and materials to make art that's unlike anything else. Um, so if I get into that school, I'll be very excited to see, you know, how I'm influenced to make some, some stuff that's outside of, of what I'm already dreaming of. Vivid Luster Factory will continue to make custom gifts, will continue to make custom paintings. The etched mirrors will be up sometime this next year. I'm also creating some at-home art curriculum so that once a week or once a month, there can be uh, a delivery of one project that has some really good foundations of art practices in it. Instead of just gluing cotton balls to look like a monster, uh, maybe I will do a piece that is, you make three or four monsters and you color them based on the feelings that, that you think they're feeling. So the younger kids get a get a chance to be building the foundation blocks of art in 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 their education um, i know with all the changes that covid's brought about there there could be more support 
for at-home art students. And that's, that's also important to me. And then Vivid Luster Factory will be, or excuse me, Vivid Luster Photography will get developed over the next year, year and a half. And when I get to Colorado on the family farm, it may become a wildlife or farm style photography page. I'd like to get some photographs that I'm able to take during that part of my life published in different um, publications. So there's, there's going to be some work towards that as well. And all in all, I'm going to continue to make all day, every day out of everything I can find. And my hot glue gun and I will never be more than arm's reach from each other. I think there may also be some more writing in my future. And I would like to find a way to combine writing and painting or writing and sculpting, whether that be my voice recorded and played while you're looking at something that I'd create, you know, an object that I'd created. I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but I'm, I know that there's still words left inside of me to get out. So any questions?